Hey, welcome everyone to yet another video. And in this review, we're taking a look at Shin Megami Tensei Double Summoner Soul Hackers, especially the 3DS version of the game. The 3DS is a really good little handheld with a ton of amazing RPGs such as Dragon Quest VIII, Shin Megami Tensei IV, Fire Emblem Awakening, Bravely Default, and much more. Those games are all classics that every JRPG fan played and owned, but the game that I'll talk about in this video is different, it's unknown, and it's as good if not better than the games that I mentioned previously. Welcome to Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers. Soul Hackers is an enhanced port of Devil Summoner that originally came out on the Sega Saturn in 1995 in Japan. This version is a new version for the 3DS and has a ton of additional features like additional demons, uh, voice acting, the game is fully voiced, new graphics and much more. In my opinion it makes it the definitive way to play the game. The 3DS version came out in 2012 in Japan and it still is amazing even today in 2020. There's a few things that I want to look at in this review so let's get right into it. Uh, first of all if I do a quick summary of the story without spoiling anything obviously. Uh, in this game you're part of a group of hackers that call themselves the Spookies. But you'll play as a silent protagonist that is most of the time accompanied by Itomi, one of your friends. Uh, and on a certain day, Itomi gets possessed by Nemissa, a demon. Uh, Nemissa will be one of the main characters that will play with you throughout the story. Uh, her goal is to understand who she is, and it fits with your own goal, so that's why she'll stick with you. Nemissa is amazing, she's super friendly, and uh, she's a damn savage as well with some of the enemies that she'll meet. Uh, honestly, she's awesome. It's hard to describe uh, Soul Hackers' story without spoiling anything, but basically you'll play through vision quests uh, that are kind of like dungeons, and you'll, ch you'll chase a certain group called the Phantom, the Phantom Society that, they're that they are trying to steal everyone's souls in Amami City. Uh, you, as the group of Acker, will investigate the society and try to bring them to justice. As you can see, this game is extremely unique. Uh, Soul Hackers is completely different than other Megaton games. From its setting to its characters and storyline, everything is really different and it's a welcome thing. During the whole playthrough, you always get those 90s retro vibes and it's also super cool. I think this game would be an amazing entry point to the franchise for any newcomer that has never played an SMT game. Uh, and I say that for a few reasons. If you want to jump right into this game without any knowledge of Shin Megami Tensei, you can definitely do that. Devil Summoner is its own thing and Soul Hackers is the first installment in that franchise. Another reason why it would be a great entry point is because Megaton is a franchise that is well known to be unforgiving at certain times on the difficulty level. In this game, as mentioned previously, you're a group of hackers, and by being hackers, you as the player can perform a few acts that will help you through certain parts of the game. Acts such as auto map, where the whole map is visible right from the start on your bottom screen, so you don't have to discover it and you don't have to explore everything to just walk around and get straight to the point if you want. Another hack that was pretty handful at certain times is to uh, lower the difficulty level. Uh, so if you encounter some demons that you have a hard time with or you just want to get to a certain place, you can lower the, the difficulty level. Some veterans will also like the addition of being able to raise the difficulty level. That's all. That was also pretty cool. I tried both and uh, it, there's really a difference there. And I think this addition would make the job easier for someone new to this type of game or to SMT in general. Now I'll quickly talk about the graphics. Uh, something that hit me right away while playing, it, while playing this game is how beautiful the fully animated cutscenes are. There's not a ton of them, but when you see one of them, it's really cool. I mean, I'll add one right there, so just look at it, it's really beautiful. You're on a 3DS and it feels like you're watching an anime, it's really cool. The general presentation of the game is beautiful as well, the character designs, all of that. It's really, they knocked it out of the part with the, the graphics and the design of the game. Something that Atlas did really well with this game is to make the player feel like they're part of this world that they created. They were able to do that so perfectly with a soundtrack that is composed by Shoji Meguro. 
Toshiko Tazaki and Tsukasa Masuko, who all three are well known for their support and work at Atlas on Megaton games in general. Some of the tracks are extremely good, especially the boss, the boss tracks. Here's one of my favorites. Another aspect of the game that really helps the immersion is the voice acting. Uh, as I previously mentioned, everything is voiced in this game, or most of the game is voiced, which is awesome. I was playing in English, with English dubs, of course. They did an amazing job of adding a personality to those characters. Once you're done with the game, you feel like some of the characters, like Nemissa, were really your friend. Uh, and it feels weird to say that, but this is how good the English voice acting actually is for this game. I can't stress enough how good the the how good of a job they did of putting the player in the mood when they were playing this game. Like there's a point in the, the, the game and that's not that's no spoilers again, but there's a certain point in the game where you have to explore an unted mansion and the music, the type of demons that you encounter in the dimension really makes you feel like, damn, I'm in a haunted mansion right here, <laughs> and it's pretty cool. One thing that I did not like as much in this game is the way that they presented the side quests to you. I'm a JRPG player, as you might know, and I like to do side quests that's the way that I like to grind sometimes, where I where I don't really feel like just spamming battles and killing monsters back to back to back. So I like to do side quests sometimes to gain other experience and other equipment. Well, in Soul Hackers, they don't really tell you when and where you should go to a certain place to get a quest. And it's not identified very clearly. At least that's what I thought. Uh, at, after like 10 hours of gameplay, I searched a bit and I tried to find how to do side quests. And this is where I found out that... When you are in the main story and you go to your HQ, it progresses the story. But after you're done with the progression of the main story, like when you just completed a certain part, you just spoke with your friends at the HQ, you gotta go out, and then you gotta go back in the HQ, and go on your PC, and then you'll see if a side quest is available, they'll tell you where to go. So it was not, like, I would just like if... Like some someone in your party, like Nemesa, would tell you, "Hey, don't you want to go to to HQ, see if something showed up or something?" I, I don't know, but this is just one part that I thought they could have done in a better way, or at least in a way that was more no noticeable. And uh, something that was very cool as well is the ending. I don't want to talk about it since I don't want to spoil you guys, but the ending is really cool. I really liked it. It surprised me to see the least. Like there's a twist, and you'll you'll see once you finish the game. But it's really amazing overall. This game is really good, I think it's one of the most underrated JRPGs on the 3DS and I highly suggest that you guys check it out. Even if you're not familiar with Shin Megami Tensei and with the upcoming SMT5 as well, if you want to introduce yourself to the franchise, I think it's a really good entry point and I'll say it, I think it's even better than SMT4 for newcomers. I don't know if it's a better game, but I think it's a better package and a better experience for someone that has never played any game from the Megaton franchise. Thank you very much for watching this review guys, I hope you liked it. If you want more SMT content, more Persona content or anything Atlas, don't hesitate to click that subscribe button and if you like the video, give me your thumbs up, that also really helps to support the channel. See you next time guys.